Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And by his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Friends, a very warm welcome to our Good Friday service as we rejoice in the good news of Jesus' death for us. And so why don't we begin by standing and singing of his great mercy. Would you please stand? Stronger than darkness, new every morn, I'll see. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your abundant love, your vast mercy, your riches of kindness lavished on us. And so we pray that today as we open up our hearts and as we look afresh at the cross, may you help us to see your grace and mercy afresh this day. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please be seated? Well, as we gather together, one of the great things which we can do is open up our hearts and our lives before God without shame, without fear of punishment, but confident in his loving mercy. So you please pray with me together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, who gave your Son to suffer the shame of the cross, save us from hardness of heart, that seeing him who died for us, we may repent, confess our sin, and receive your overflowing love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lynn's now going to come and read the Bible for us. The reading this morning is taken from Luke chapter 23, and I'm going to be starting on at the 26th verse, and you can find it on page 884 in the Bibles in the pew. And as they led Jesus away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they would begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they were crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments, and the people stood by watching. But the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But others rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, 
And there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts, and all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Lynn. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you are God who speaks to us, who has made yourself known to us. So we pray that you would do just that this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Death is hardly ever good news. Uh, over the past 12 months, it's been in our faces, on the news, on social media, We've seen death tolls from wars rising, death tolls on the roads. We've seen cold-blooded murder in our state. We've seen death from natural disasters. Death is hard. Death is soul-destroying. It's life-altering. It's not good. So why on earth do we call this day the day when a person named Jesus was killed, Good Friday. What is possibly so good about it? Well, it's good because death was never designed to be part of God's plan for this world. God didn't want us to die. Death only came about because humanity decided to reject God. It only came about because of sin. And so here is why Good Friday is good news. It's good news because Jesus took our sin and our punishment that we deserve, which means that we don't have to die. Of course, we'll still face death, but we'll have the everlasting hope of eternal life. So today, three points is where we're headed. Firstly, we'll see God's King unjustly sentenced and crucified. God's king, unjustly sentenced and crucified. So firstly, God's king. Just to set the scene here, Jesus would have been about 33 years of age or so by this point, in the first century in Jerusalem. So far throughout Jesus' ministry, he has been healing the sick. He has been opening up the eyes of the blind. He has been teaching people radical things about the good news of God. He has even raised people from the dead. People from everywhere came and flocked to catch a glimpse of him. However, Jesus wasn't popular with everybody. He wasn't popular with the religious leaders of the day. These were called the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. These guys didn't like Jesus at all because he threatened their leadership. He called out their utter hypocrisy. He didn't fit their version of their king. So in the past 12 hours leading up to the passage which Lynn just read before, something quite distressing has happened. Jesus has been betrayed by one of his closest mates He's been arrested by these religious leaders. He's been denied by even one of his closest friends. He's been beaten. He's been mocked. He's been spat on. And it's absolutely crucial to note that Jesus hasn't done anything wrong. Jesus hasn't done anything to deserve this. 
It's also crucial to note that this wasn't a surprise for Jesus. He knew that this was going to happen. He told his disciples, his close mates, more than three times that this was going to happen. And so while the situation looks like it's snowballing out of control, Jesus knows exactly what's happening. And yet he endures this and all that is to come. And so they drag Jesus down before the ruling council the big wigs of the Jewish religion of the time. This is like the the High Court of Australia or the Supreme Court in America. Uh, These are the big wigs. See, what these guys want to do is they want to get a clear answer from Jesus that could mean that they could put him to death. They want Jesus to indict himself. But it doesn't happen that cleanly. They ask him when he is put on trial, if you are the Messiah, tell us. The Messiah was thought of by some as a, as a warrior king who would come and overthrow the Romans. If they got Jesus to clearly say that he was the Messiah, then he could have gotten a clean death sentence from the governor. But he doesn't give them that satisfaction. So they try a different route. They say, if you are the son of God, then tell us. Jesus replies, you say that I am. He doesn't say anything that they could accuse him of. They think that they've got a solid case, and so they go up to the Roman leader of the time, Pilate. Because at this stage of history, the nation of Israel was under the governing authority of the Romans. Their leaders didn't have the authority to put people to death, and so they had to go to Pilate, the person who did. So they trot off to his palace. There's a full trail of people who are bloodthirsty, who wanted Jesus' death. And when they get there, they begin to hurl insults here and there. They hurl accusations. They try every angle, every loophole. They begin to flat out lie. So just imagine being in this courtroom. It's loud. It's full of angry faces, red faces, people who are shouting clenched fists. And then all goes silent. Pilate asks Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replies, it is as you say. Here's the thing. So far, they have accused Jesus of being the Messiah, of claiming that he was the Messiah. They accused Jesus of claiming that he was the son of God that he was the Christ, that he was the king, but that is exactly who Jesus was. He is the Messiah who is going to rescue his people, but not in the way that they are expecting. He is the son of God who came as 100% God, 100% human, God in flesh. He was sinless, innocent, a real person who stepped onto this earth 2,000 years ago. He is God's king. And his kingdom is like no other. But he was right there in front of them all. He was there for 33 years, preaching and teaching in public for three years, but they didn't see Jesus for who he was. But they're just about to kill him. He is the one who loves them. He is the one who has came to save them. But they hated him. He is God's king. He is God's king, soon to be unjustly sentenced. The crowds didn't get what they wanted from Pilate, so they were sent off to another leader, their regional leader, called Herod. Uh, Jesus was once again questioned, but gave no answer. Herod didn't find Jesus guilty, and so sent him back to Pilate. It plays out a bit like a Shakespearean comedy, doesn't it? These leaders wanting the death sentence and trudging all across the countryside, left, right and centre, but nobody was willing to give it to them. Why can't they get anybody to say that Jesus was guilty? Why did they have to resort to lying? Well, it's because he isn't guilty. Jesus is innocent. He hadn't done anything wrong. 
Jesus was the one who helped people, who showed compassion. He was tempted in every way, but did not sin. He is the only one who has ever lived, who will ever live, who has not sinned. Now, I know that some people may think that they aren't too bad. I meet people who say, oh, you know, I'm not that bad. I don't sin. I I, I haven't murdered anybody. I haven't robbed a bank lately. But just imagine that uh, on the big streams, on the big screens and on the live stream going out to the whole wide world internet, we were going to show the whole world your entire life. Warts and all. Every time you picked up the phone while driving in the car, every time you may have fudged that number on the tax return, every bad thought behind someone's back, every lie, every bit of gossip, any time that you've acted selfishly, every fit of anger. Now, I don't know about you, but I would rather that not happen. (laughs) Why? Because my life is ugly. My life is full of sin. I'm full of hypocrisy. I'm full of jealousy and impatience and so much more. And all that stuff, all that live, all that we do when we live against God's design for our world is called sin. When we live for ourselves instead of living for God, that's called sin. It's not just the biggies, but it's our life in every way. But you see, with Jesus, if we were to hook his life up to the live stream and up to the big screens here today, there would be nothing to show. No bad thought, no lying, no deceit, no selfish thoughts, no pride, no hate. He was sinless. There is nothing that we could accuse him of. And so the leaders had to resort to lying, shouting, demanding. Then they eventually got what they wanted. Because at the time of this year, uh, Pilate could choose a prisoner to release of their choosing. In prison, there was a man called Barabbas. He started riots. He was also a murderer. And so what did the crowd shout? Luke 22 says, but the whole crowd shouted, away with this man, away with Jesus, release Barabbas to us. Pilate wanted to release Jesus. Pilate appealed to them, but they kept on shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Even after appealing more times, Pilate had to give into the pressure. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder and sentenced to death the one who is innocent. And you might be thinking, Michael, how is this good news? How is an unjust trial good news? Well, for us to be in a relationship with God and for us to be with him for eternity, for us to live our best life now and live in eternity, what is required? Well, what's required is sinlessness. We need our movie to show that it has a perfect record. For us to have life with God and for us to have eternal life with him, all we need to do is be perfect. Seems rather simple, doesn't it? But there's a problem. We can't rewind the tape. Once our record is there, we can't work it off. We can't do enough good things to outweigh our bad things. We all stand guilty before God. One of the prominent New Testament authors, Paul, writes uh, that there is no one who is sinless, not even one, for we all have sinned and are falling short of the glory of God. And the punishment for rejecting God is death. Eternal death. 
So why is this good news? Why is Jesus good news? Well, because Jesus' death actually achieved something. Jesus' death actually saves us from our sin. See, Barabbas was guilty. Barabbas the murderer was guilty. He deserved punishment, but Jesus died in his place, and Barabbas was released. Likewise, I am guilty. I deserve punishment, but Jesus died in my place. I have been released. We are guilty. We deserve punishment. But Jesus died in our place. All we need to do is ask for forgiveness. And this release will be given. See, on that day when Jesus, who was God's king and unjustly sentenced, our sin was put on him. Our punishment was taken by him. Remember the words that were read out at the beginning of the service from the prophet Isaiah. It was all part of God's plan. It says, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. See, on Good Friday, Jesus took our sin. On Good Friday, Jesus died in our place. On Good Friday, Jesus made a way for us to have a perfect and whole relationship with God for eternity. And that's why today is called Good Friday. God's King, unjustly sentenced, crucified. Jesus was let out and forced to carry his cross. Although being so weak from the beatings, he couldn't. Another man was chosen. He was stripped, he was laid down on the cross. Nails of about six inches long were driven through his wrists and ankles into the wood. Lifted up for all to see. Crucifixion was a long and drawn-out process that the Romans perfected. It wasn't only physically painful, but it was completely and utterly shameful, humiliating. It stripped the person of all dignity. So here is Jesus, strung up on the cross, God's one and only beloved Son, People were continuing to watch the gruesome spectacle, continuing to hurl insults on him. And what does Jesus say? He cries out to God, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Father, forgive them. Darkness came over the whole land in the middle of the day. It was as if creation recognised itself, the darkness of this hour. But Jesus, the Son of God, bore the weight of our sin, taking the wrath of God that we deserved. And then he died. The innocent died so that we, the guilty ones, can go free. And it's all because he loves us. Because his phenomenal, utter love for us. He doesn't want us to carry the weight of our sin. He doesn't want us to face the judgment. He loves us enough to die for us. And so, friend, he loves you. He loves you enough to die for you, take, to take your punishment. And he wants you to turn to him and believe in him and accept his freedom. And all we have to do is turn to him, ask for his forgiveness, and it will be completely and utterly given. When we turn and ask for forgiveness, that movie of our lives with that imperable record 
gets destroyed, gets wiped clean. No more record of sin. No more shame. No more guilt. But perfect freedom and relationship with God for eternity. This is Good Friday. This is good news. But this isn't the end. Death won't have the final say. Jesus will rise again. Jesus will defeat death. Jesus will soon secure us life, eternal life. Life with God. And life with God's King, who is unjustly sentenced, crucified, and will be risen. Let's give thanks. Our gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your abundant and phenomenal and love for us, your grace and your mercy, that you would send your Son down to this earth to live the perfect life that we couldn't live and to die the death that we deserve. So, Heavenly Father, please help us to turn to you, to cast our sin, our shame, our guilt completely upon you, and accept your freedom and love in our lives. And so we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. And as we do as a church together, we proclaim what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. So if you do believe this, please join in with us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're going to continue rejoicing in song.
Would you please be seated? We're going to spend some time now talking to our great God in prayer. Would you join with me as we pray? Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, we can't help but praise and thank you for all that you've done for us, especially for all that we remember on this day, Good Friday. Thank you for your great love in sending your son, Jesus, to die in our place, that we might be forgiven. We are humbled as we look to the cross, knowing that Jesus, the innocent one, died in our place, in the place of sinners who have rejected you and turned away from you. We are so sorry, Lord, for turning away from you and living selfish lives. We know that we don't deserve your grace and we can't possibly earn your favour. Yet, we are confident knowing that you are a God who is abounding in love and compassion. And we thank and praise you for your amazing mercy and grace that you shower on us. Thank you, Lord, for the cross and for the reminder that it is of your faithfulness, grace and compassion and the lengths that you went to in order to save us broken people. And we thank you for Jesus. Please help us to remember and celebrate him and all that he did today and always. May we constantly keep coming back to the cross and keep coming back to Jesus. We pray, Lord, for all those who don't yet know of Jesus or don't yet know of your great love and mercy that is on offer for them in him. We think especially of our family members, friends, those in our neighbourhoods and wider community who don't know of this great news. We pray that this Easter they may hear of the true hope of Easter, the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection, and may they turn to him. Thank you, Lord, that we don't need to do anything to earn this love or forgiveness but we simply need to come to you and trust in what Jesus has done for us, asking for forgiveness and knowing with full confidence that we can be forgiven because of his death and resurrection. And finally, Lord, we pray for all those who are traveling this Easter weekend. Please keep them safe as they travel and please bring them back home safely. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you now join with me as we say the words of the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, right now we have the amazing chance to say sorry to God and confess our sins, say sorry for not living as he would have us live and not living with him as our king, and renew our trust in him and Remember the great assurance that we have because of Good Friday, the assurance of God's love and forgiveness. So in a minute, I'm going to read from a book called Hebrews, and then we can read together uh, the prayer on the screen from Psalm 51. So therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. So knowing the goodness of God and our failures to respond with love and obedience, let us confess our sins, saying together, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. 
for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Ensure to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. The great news is that God is slow to anger and full of compassion, forgiving all who humbly repent and trust in his Son as Saviour and Lord. And God therefore forgives you in Christ Jesus, in whom there is no condemnation. Amen. Will you please stand? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Brothers and sisters, we are the body of Christ. The Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Please share a sign of peace with someone nearby. Let's continue in song together.
Please be seated. Well, we have the opportunity today to celebrate uh, our Saviour's death for us in a meal in the Lord's Supper together. If you trust in Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, and if you have turned to him, you're more than welcome to join us together as we celebrate and commemorate. The way we do that here at St John's is uh, I'll be up the front with the bread, which is gluten-free bread. Hugh will be beside me with uh, small cups of grape juice. If you come down the front, uh, we'll give you a piece of bread and a small cup. And if you take them back to your pews, back to your seats where you're seated now, uh, then we'll eat and drink together as a sign of our unity together. Uh, Up the back, there'll be a small bowl for you to put the plastic cups in at the end as well. But hear these words from 1 John 4.10. That in this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, friends, lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your son, our saviour, Jesus Christ who became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. He offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained eternal deliverance for his people. The tree of defeat became the tree of victory. Where life was lost, there has been life restored. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And now, gracious God, we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine, and we pray that we who receive them in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, according to our Saviour's word, in remembrance of his suffering and death, may share his body and blood. For on the night before he died, Jesus took bread, And when he had given you thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We eat this bread and drink this cup to proclaim the death of the Lord. We do this until he returns. Come, Lord Jesus. Father, as we recall his saving death and glorious resurrection, May we who share these gifts be renewed by your Holy Spirit and united in the body of your Son. Bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, there to feast at your table and join in your eternal praise. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain to receive praise and honour and glory and power forever and ever. Amen.
Friends, Christ's body, Christ was innocent, he was blameless, and yet his body was broken on our behalf. So take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. And drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. Gracious God, thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thank you for assuring us of your goodness and love and that we are living members of Christ's body. Together, Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. of notices before we head out to morning tea. We'd love for you to join us for some morning tea just out in the room. The doors will will come open and you can join us with some hot cross buns, some tea and coffee. We'd love to get to know you more. And a great way for us to get to know you more if you're new or visiting or want to find out more about Jesus, then a great way to do that is by filling out one of these Connect cards. They're up the back uh, on the table and if you put your name down, uh, we promise we won't spam you, but we just want to get into contact and, and get to know you a little bit better. Uh, our celebration of Easter has only just begun. Uh, it's this afternoon. Uh, we have an opportunity at 2 p.m. to come and reflect further on the beauty of the cross. Uh, we live in such a fast-paced world. Uh, we live in a world that doesn't stop. We live in a world that is filled with information, with media, with, uh, with so many different voices. And this afternoon, we have an opportunity to pause and reflect and listen to the words of God and have a chance to be silent and still before God. So I'd love to invite you to come back at 2 p.m. as we reflect on, uh, on the cross for an hour with guided reflections Uh, throughout the service and with uh, some singing as well. Um, So I'd love to invite you back right here at 2 p.m. today. So go have hot cross buns for lunch, have a nap, and then come back. (laughs) Then love for you to join us on Easter Day at 9 a.m. This is a great chance for us to celebrate the, the glorious news of Jesus' resurrection. Jesus didn't stay dead, but he did rise again. So I'd love for you to, to join us again on Easter morning as we uh, celebrates that great news of the new life of Jesus. If anything today has sparked any questions for you, uh, if you want to find out more about this Jesus fellow, if you want to find out more about faith or more about the Bible, then a great way to do that is through the Alpha course. Uh, Alpha is an opportunity and space for people to explore life's big questions. Uh, questions about God, uh, questions about life, Uh, questions about other things, and would love for you to join us. This term, we're going to be running Alpha uh, on Mondays at noon. Uh, It includes a free lunch, so that's a great deal, uh, I think. Uh, So if you'd like to find out more about Alpha, if you'd like to come along to that, please come and have a chat to uh, myself uh, afterwards. I'll just be up the back in front of the doors, and I'd love to answer any questions that you might have about the course. The course runs for six weeks. Uh, There's there's gonna be a video and then some discussion questions afterwards, and there'll be no pressure to answer any questions. You won't be asked any hard questions. You won't be put on the spot, uh, but this is a space for people to find out more about Jesus. So I'd love for you to join us for Alpha. If this time of the week doesn't quite work for you, um, come and have a chat to me afterwards, and I'd love to meet with you Uh, as well, and have that opportunity to ask questions about Jesus. But as we head out now, how about we stand and sing and continue rejoicing in the grace of God? Would you please stand?
Gracious God, we thank you for your amazing salvation from the grips of sin and death. We thank you so much for the amazing and glorious death of Jesus. We thank you so much for this Good Friday. And so send us out in the hope of this day, in the hope of the gospel. So we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. 
In the name of Christ. Amen.